You should be live now, Steve. Great. Good afternoon, everybody. So my name is uh, Steve Ramul, and I'm, uh, I'm the president and owner of the Home Inspectors Group. We're a service organization with Natural Resources Canada. Uh, one of the things that I want to discuss uh, for our presentation is understanding heat pump requirements for a better homeowner experience. One of the challenges that we've seen uh, since the launch of the Greener Homes program uh, is a misunderstanding of heat pump requirements so that homeowners essentially are getting the short end of the stick um, where they're getting the wrong equipment installed. Uh, they are, their homes are not qualifying. Um, and so to mitigate a lot of this, um, we're tra training and educating the industry energy advisors to make sure that everybody is able to understand the spirit of the program and also understand a proper customer experience um, so that the homeowners are happy essentially and they're able to qualify for the incentives. So one of the things that we want to start off with is uh, understanding the spirit of the program. So essentially with the Canada Greener Homes program, now you have to understand that across the country, we have situations where there are co-delivery partners with the federal government. So in Nova Scotia and Ontario, uh, Quebec, um, and these co-delivery partners also have small nuances, small differences to the Canada Greener Homes Initiative. It's very important to understand that you should have a relationship with a service organization or an energy advisor, depending on, the, on your marketplace, and ask the questions as it pertains to, uh, to your province, essentially. What we're going to cover here is really the broader program as it relates to the entire country, um, as this is the basis for some of those co-delivery programs as well. So as far as the spirit of the program, um, the whole idea was to initiate market transformation, to install non-fossil fuel burning heating equipment, and send homeowners to install heat pumps, which will drive essentially the economy, spur the industry to seek training as demand ramp ramps up um, and essentially drive the economy as well. Spur manufacturers to recognize Canada as a hotbed for heat pump demand. Um, anybody who's in the industry has seen a lot of manufacturers start to bring in a lot more of their uh, equipment and product into the country. But for a long time, you couldn't get product. Um, and this program really has helped drive some of that and recognize Canada as a hotbed for our heat pumps. And also drive technology investments. So this program is looking to drive technology investments by these organizations to implement things like um, uh, like the cold climate um, the, uh, the standalone uh, programs, the coils only uh, systems, um, and getting those heat pumps out to the marketplace, which is going to spur on more sales for individuals. When it comes to qualifying homes, so as a basis for the program, um, initially anything that is three stories uh, above ground uh, does not qualify, so it has to be three stories or less for the qualifying home. The size of the home and the footprint, uh, 6,400 square feet, or to be exact, 6,458. Anything larger than that will not qualify. Single and semi-detached homes, row housing, townhomes, mobile homes on permanent foundation also qualify uh, for the program. Non-qualifying are things like co-ops. Uh, if you are in, in a specific province, uh, co-ops may qualify. So for example, in Ontario, uh, co-ops qualify because it's co-delivered with uh, Enbridge Gas, um, and it may qualify in other parts of the country. You're going to have to speak with um, with specific service organizations or energy advisors just to make sure that uh, what does qualify, there's slight differences. Multi-unit residential buildings that are uh, four stories or higher and that are greater than 64 or 58 uh, square feet um, do not qualify. Some of the things to to remember. The homeowner, they must own their home. Uh, and like I said earlier, some provinces are, there's slight differences to that. Uh, they must be the primary resident. Uh, they cannot be a landlord unless they are a landlord that reside in that home that they will qualify. Single family residential homes essentially uh, are qualified. A multi-unit residential buildings that are less than three stories. 
Now, heat pumps incentivize under the Canada Greener Homes Initiative. Uh, there's essentially three types, essentially. You have the air source heat pump, uh, ground source heat pumps, and also the heat pump water heaters. Um, the two categories for the air source heat pumps, you have the cold climate air source heat pumps. Um, they essentially have to be Energy Star certified, and they're eligible under Canada Greener Homes as well as the uh, CMAC loan as well. Um, and also the Energy Star heat pumps that can also have a cold climate certification. So uh, just because they have an AHRI number doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to qualify. They have to be under the eligibility criteria, under the eligibility list. So the eligibility list is critical. We're going to review that a little bit more as we go along. Uh, incentivize air source heat pump, the different types. You have your conventional heat pumps. They're under the category of HRCU ACB. This is paired with a furnace or an air handler. You also have a coils only. For the coils only heat pumps, we're going to review that later on as well. Uh, those are under the HRCU AC uh, classification. Uh, single packages also the under HSPA. Variable speed mini split systems, centrally ducted and also compact ducted. Non ducted indoor units, variable speed multi unit, uh, multi zone split systems. All non-ducted uh, indoor units and all ducted indoor units as well. And then there's also the mixed ducted and non-ducted indoor units that are incentivized under the program. What are some of the requirements that are absolutely critical to understand to be able to help your homeowner and guide them through these incentives? One is they must be on the eligibility list. Now, in Quebec and Nova Scotia, as I said earlier, there's a standalone list for those. And so please make sure you take a look at what those lists are. It is on the government website. Uh, but other parts of the province, the eligibility list uh, can also be found um, on the NRCAN website as well. Uh, they must be purchased in Canada. Online purchases are only, only eligible if they are ordered from a distributor located in Canada. The installation must be installed by a licensed and trained and trained uh, professional. We don't want homeowners to go and purchase them off Amazon and then install their own and then uh, look for incentives. So we're so the government is looking for licensed and trained professionals. Uh, there's also a min minimum requirement of two heads installed. Um, the two heads installed will be for a uh, for a mini split, for example. Now. There's a little bit more to it than just having two heads installed. So the air source heat pump that is installed must be installed with the intent to distribute heat to the whole home. That means that if you are in a bungalow, for example, a two head system will work. Um, however, if you are in a two story home, the minimum that you need to install to qualify will be three heads. If you were to install three head, two heads in that, uh, in that uh, home, for example, a two story home, you will need to meet the criteria of distribute heat to the whole home. So three heads is required. Also, uh, ductless air source heat pumps um, must also be installed with the intent uh, to heat the whole home, of course, as are ducted. Um, the one head per floor must include the basement. So in the scenario that I gave about the, um, duct, uh, the, the bungalow, the, um, the basement requires a head as well. Now, you don't need to meet peak load for that home, so you don't need to meet the heat loss for that home. It needs to be able to distribute heat. So one of the best ways to look at it is uh, at least to have one head or one warm air supply outlet per floor, including the basement. Now, there are some cases where the basement is less than, than five feet, nine inches. If it's less than five feet, nine inches, it does not require an, an, a head or an air supply, but if it's more than five feet, nine inches, it does require a head and a warm air supply outlet. A minimum of one warm air supply outlet or indoor head is required on every floor, including each level of a split level mezzanine, uh, for example, um, for that specific dwelling uh, unit in the building. More than one warm air supply outlet and indoor air head per floor may be required to ensure heat distribution. So although you're meeting, uh, if you have a bungalow, for example, and you're installing two heads, uh, one head per floor, for example, including the basement, if it's a larger bungalow, um, installing just two heads is, is not enough to meet the, uh, the criteria of distributing heat. So a third head, possibly a fourth head, depending on the size of the, the home, 
uh, will be required as well. How are you going to know this? The best way to do that is to have a conversation with your service organization, uh, your energy advisor, and they'll be able to guide you as to proper comforts for the homeowner. Ground source um, uh, heat pumps and their requirements. So of course, always make sure they're on the eligibility list. That is the foundation and the starting point. Uh, the installation of the ground source heat pump is installed by a trained professional. Uh, must be purchased in Canada or an online distributor located in Canada. What doesn't qualify are direct expansion, uh, brine to water, water to water. They're not eligible under the, uh, for the program. Um, installation of the full system, uh, so the heating unit and the loops, is where you're going to get uh, the homeowner will get incentives. And the other way you can get an incentive is to replace the heat pump unit only. Um, and we'll go through that later on as far as what the incentives means. What are some of the game changers right now that are happening uh, for the industry? Well, many of you might have heard about the coils only or the standalone systems. These systems are listed uh, on the Enercan uh, heat pump location, and they'll be listed under specific uh, under the um, classification of HRCUAC. I believe there's 295 uh, systems right now that are listed, and these are standalone systems. A lot of the confusion with the standalone systems comes into the latter part of this uh, of this presentation. We'll go through that, um, but essentially, uh, these are known as coil systems only. Uh, where the inside and outside units uh, can be paired with furnaces that are already installed in the home. Uh, the search results in the eligible product list will show model numbers for the inside and the outside units, while the furnace field will say coils only. For coils only heat pump, steps need to be taken to ensure their heating and cooling performance, essentially. And this is where the confusion comes in. So when these standalone systems are installed, it is strongly, strongly recommended that uh, one is we're seeing installs that are happening with, uh, and they can be installed. They can be installed on a mid-efficiency uh, furnace, for example, or a single stage furnace, high efficiency single stage. The issue with those is the where performance start to degrade. So one of the recommendations to ensure that the customer is probably taken care of, or the homeowner knows that what they're getting is gonna be optimal performance. What is strongly recommended is that they are installed with an ECM motor, variable speed motor. Although this is not a requirement that says you must install them, it is strongly recommended. And if you're going to do right by your homeowner, um, ensuring that they have uh, an ECM or a variable speed motor is, uh, is very important. The other thing to make sure is that the furnace controls allow for the thermostat to work properly with the heat pump system. Uh, the thermostat should be compatible um, and the heat pumps are, are uh, uh, it should be compatible with the heat pump and the furnace. And then the rated airflow of the furnace and the heat pump are also similar. This is again to be installed um, as recommended by the manufacturer um, and, uh, and to ensure that your customer is essentially getting the product, both the actual product that qualifies, but also the product that's going to give them the optimal efficiency. What else matters with this? Sizing matters. One of the things that we're seeing quite a bit is where uh, HVAC contractors um, are being told by either energy advisors that they have to have a specific size um, or the homeowners are deferring to the energy advisors across the country saying, oh, this is what they told me the size is. The contractor is essentially responsible for the sizing of the heat pump. It is not the energy advisor. It is We are not responsible for that. It is you who are who is responsible for that and you need to provide the best sizing um, of the heat pump for the home to deliver proper amount of heat. So the heat pump is typically not sized to 100% of the peak load, as this could lead to oversized system that frequently cycles on and off. Mechanical system contractors should design a system that optimizes the energy efficiency, the energy savings for a house and increases the comfort of the occupants. That's essentially job one. So the house as a system concept is a concept that we utilize within the energy advisor uh, industry. Um, and that ensures that uh, any changes that are made to the home are also taken into consideration when a new system is being put in. So for example, if you are installing, um, adding insulation, uh, draft proofing the home, replacing windows, all of that, all of that is gonna have an impact 
as to the um, the sizing of the unit because you're also decreasing your um, uh, the the size of home the size that requires to be the heat of the um, the volume of the home. How can how can you be helped? Well, one of the ways that you can uh, you can take a look at is there's a free toolkit, uh, the toolkit for air source heat pump sizing and selection that's available on the Anacana website. That's the link on the presentation, as you can see. Uh, it's a free toolkit. There's also a video there that actually shows you how to use it, uh, but it's going to help with uh, with proper sizing. Um, of the, the unit. So what happens in a situation where there's already an existing heat pump? I get these calls quite a bit where the home, the contractor will say, well, there's already an existing heat pump. Does that mean they don't qualify? No, absolutely. That's not, that's not the case. They absolutely do qualify. Well, if you, if the homeowner already has an existing heat pump, what qualifies is the new heat pump that is integrated with the existing system, not um, not the existing one. Uh, the existing, the new one has to uh, has to be on the eligibility list, of course. Um, but the new heat pump um, is put in essentially to help with the requirements of distribution uh, of heat to the whole home. So only, like I said earlier, only the new system is eligible for the grant um, as long as it's on the eligibility list. Uh, and essentially, the new system is going to be working with the uh, the existing system. There are examples where a uh, home has a central system, um, but for some reason, the homeowner has converted the attic space into a livable space. And once they've converted this into a livable space, there isn't uh, a, um, an air supply there to meet with the uh, distribution of heat to, uh, to the home. A, uh, another um, a, another heat pump essentially is installed. A condenser would be installed. So if the central one is installed for the main floors, in the top one, there would have to be a, another heat pump that's installed to provide heat to that floor to qualify under the parameters. Installing just a central system where there is no distribution of heat to the top floor um, is not going to meet the, the minimum standards. Um, what are some of the heat pump grants? Uh, for a ductless two-head system, again, looking at a bungalow, for example, it's 2500 Now, these incentives here are the greener homes incentives across Canada, and there are partners that actually will help bolster some of these. And in different provinces, some of these might be increased. Um, in Ontario, for example, uh, with Enbridge Gas running it, uh, though there's additional incentives for that, and they top off at uh, 6500 um, so we have your three heads. The three heads, if it's a non-cold climate, will be a 4,000. Uh, a cold climate system, whether it's three heads or central, will receive up to $5,000. Now, for ground source, the grants for a full system replacement would be $5,000. And if it's just a heat pump that's being replaced, the heat pump unit itself is $3,000. A small note to remember is under the multi-unit residential buildings, the MERBs, uh, with three units or more, they do not qualify for a heat pump incentive. So it has to be less than three units or more for the murder. When is the list updated? Well, Anarchan updates the list uh, quite frequently on a quarterly basis. Um, I get calls all the time wondering, hey, when is it going to get updated? When is it going to get updated? Well, essentially, they're updating it every three months. So you're looking at March, June, September, and December, the one they're being, when it's being updated. It tends to be around the first week. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit delayed because uh, Anarchan does not receive the information uh, in a timely manner, and it delays sometimes the updating of the list. Uh, but usually you can see that it's uh, it's usually within the first week of, um, of each month uh, when it gets updated. Actually, one more thing I want to... Uh, uh, manufacturers and brand owners are essentially responsible for reporting their information, um, usually by the first of every month, giving Anarchan a chance to uh, to update the information. That's one thing I missed from that. Okay, so how do you prove customer experience? One is it is absolutely critical to set the right expectations with your client. That means you know the rules of the program double check that the house qualifies. So that's job one. So if you know the job, the house qualifies the equipment, you should have uh, an in-house 
a spreadsheet or some kind of cheat sheet that, uh, that before you, you speak with the homeowner, you know what qualifies for rebates and what doesn't. Double check that the insulate installation is going to qualify, meaning that um, what you're going to be installing is going to qualify. So do you need two heads, you need three heads, do, does it need an additional, um, a, additional uh, heat pump uh, split system uh, versus having just a, a, duct, a ducted system, a central system. Uh, that can be done usually usually when you have a conversation with your energy advisor. And ensure that you are installing the correct equipment as per the eligibility list. Um, and two, the, the, one of the biggest things, sorry, and three, is to create an invoice that contains model and AHRI number. What happens is the homeowner, essentially the first step is you, if you're walking in and you're talking to the homeowner who has not had an energy audit, before the installation happens, you need to have a conversation with the homeowner. That conversation is, okay, we're, we're, we're going to install the following equipment. We know that it qualifies. We've confirmed you need an energy audit. Once that energy audit happens, then they're able to uh, to a, or they're able to start um, the the install, or you're able to start the install. Well, that's only half of it. The other part is that we need to do an, a final energy audit on the home. If that final energy audit isn't um, uh, it, if, it, if it's once it's done, if it doesn't contain all the information that's needed for submission. So once we submit that information, the uh, the homeowner needs to have a proper invoice so that depending on where they are in the province, in some case or in the country, in some cases, the energy audit company is submitting. So in Ontario, they submit all the information in Alberta, for example, the homeowner must still submit this information in their portal. What's critical on the um, on the invoice is that it contains things like the you know the condenser, the model number, of the condenser, uh, the coil model numbers. If there's a furnace that's been replaced and is required to match the full system, the model number of the furnace is in there, and it matches exactly what it shows on the Anarchan list with the invoice along with the AHRI number. That AHRI number is critical to ensure that when the energy advisor or when the office looks it up. It's very simple. Or if NRCAN is, is reviewing the information, then they have that information up front. One more thing that's going to help that invoice. The, uh, the invoice itself should say whether it's been paid or financed um, so, that, uh, so that they can qualify for the, uh, for the incentives. If for some reason the system is rented, it will not qualify. So in order to qualify for these, uh, for these grants, they must pay or finance cannot be rented. Ensure that the pre uh, that the pre retrofit audit, of course, has been done prior to the uh, installation. Um, and then once that's done, you can go ahead and do your install. Once the install is done, the final audit is done. The whole uh, we submit the information in some cases, depending on where you are in the in the country, uh, the homeowner is going to sub submit some information as well. One of the things that we're getting now that it's uh, that it's the you know, the 10th of October, I believe it was the 10th. I don't remember what date it is, the 11th. No heat situations are coming up. As far as Anarchan is concerned and Greener Homes is concerned for this program, there's no such thing as a no heat. However, the incentive is for the heat pump, not the furnace. So you are able that if there is a no heat to go ahead and replace the furnace. What you can't install is the heat pump. The heat pump must be installed after the first energy audit. The reason for that is because once the energy advisor goes into the home, that information uh, that shows that there wasn't a heat pump installed, so we gather what the greenhouse gases of the home uh, are essentially before the heat pump is installed. What are the changes afterwards? Capture those savings, those greenhouse gases. That's what Anarchan is very interested in to make sure that they are able to capture that information before the heat pump is installed. So there's no such thing as a no heat. Um, you, you can install your furnace beforehand. The coil also can be installed beforehand, but the heat pump cannot be installed. The reason for this is because you could have a furnace that matches that heat pump that could have been installed two, three, or four years ago. And all you're doing is adding a heat pump. So the furnace is not incented, but it must match if you are um, if it's a matching system. If it's a coils only uh, or a standalone heat pump, uh, then that's fine. It always has to be installed after the first audit. And if you are ever in doubt, you need to make sure that you have a relationship with your service organization uh, and or your energy advisor to check if the equipment qualifies. 
So all of our partners and anybody that we work with, they check on a regular basis. They'll send us an email. Please let us know if this qualifies or doesn't qualify. I have the following situation. So that the homeowner is not aware of any of these conversations that are happening. It's all happening on the back end. And when they approach the homeowner, the homeowner is now completely educated and taken care of and ensuring that they're going to get these incentives with um, having to go through any issues. So that is essentially the, the way to navigate through the, the program. Um, and um, hopefully I've been able to answer any of the questions uh, that you may have had up until now. Are we going to be taking any, any questions in this situation? Yeah, we can certainly take uh, some questions. Uh, thanks a lot, Steve. Uh, Dana just, uh, I don't know if you see the comment there, Steve. Dana just had a correction on something. Oh. So maybe you can speak to that. Uh, the correction was both indoor and outdoor units are to be installed after uh, pre-retrofit energy audit is, is completed. Both indoor and outdoor units. Um, uh, referring to the furnace? I don't know if that's referring to the furnace or for the coil. Well, maybe Dana can can, can elaborate. Um, okay. Yeah, and let me know if you're, you're referring to the uh, the coil or the furnace. If she's still there. Okay, well, we'll let Dana do that. I don't know if there's any additional questions. How can I, I guess, I have a question. How can I, oh, there you go. Okay, we got Dana back, and then I'll ask my question. Oh, condenser and indoor coil. Okay. I'm going to take that one offline to confirm. Uh, there are situations where the indoor coil um, that has been installed already matches with the outdoor coil. Um there might be those situations, so but I'll uh, I'll confirm that. So, for for a contractor, how, what's the best way to them to talk to homeowners about this? Is and, and so on is is what is the best strategy as far as helping them sell and 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 get the business using these incentives? Yeah. So the best strategy is to one is to is to ensure that you are. Um, engaged with your local energy advisor or service organization. Um, and then have a meeting and discussing, you know, first of all, the what are the, what qualifies? So a lot of distributors, for example, and manufacturers already provide a list of what qualifies for incentives. If you don't have that list, I highly recommend that you, you get that list depending on who and what you're installing. Uh, once you know what that is, then you need to understand the rules of, of, of engagement. What, that means is, you know, if I'm going to sell a product to a homeowner, well, in order to get these incentives, that energy audit needs to happen first. So explaining those that rule of engagement to the homeowner to set the right expectations. There are cases where the, um, where, uh, you know, of course there's costs to the energy audit as well. And those costs are varying across the country. Being aware of what those costs are because the energy audit is refunded up to $600. Uh, so that's for the first and the final. Those are a total of six hundred dollars. That's that's refunded. Um, so we are getting a cold climate heat pump. You're looking at fifty six hundred dollars um, for the Canada Greener Homes program. And then uh, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to other to certain provinces, it might be higher depending on what they're what they're providing. So understanding those steps is critical. Understanding what qualifies, so that when you're speaking with a homeowner. You could present them with the product that qualify for the uh, the grants, and then from there, understanding the process as to how you can engage uh, an energy advisor uh, to come out and do the um, to do the audit. That relationship should be established before you even approach a homeowner. Okay. Are there any other any other questions from I guess the the audience? You can type them into the chat or the Q and A. Either one.
So it sounds pretty important to have, have for contractors to be to linked up with a, a home energy advisors and so on. And, yeah. and is, is it, is it, are you guys really busy? Like, is it hard with the timing and getting these inspections done? Is that an issue? And, and so on. It, it, yeah. Depending on where you are, parts of the country, we're, we're starting to see some delays. Uh, you know, for our organization, we're adding energy advisors uh, probably every, every two weeks or so we're adding energy advisors uh, in Ontario. We're seeing some delays in other parts of the country. There are some delays. You know, there was a time where you can do an energy audit within two days. Um, we're seeing some delays right now of uh, anywhere from a week to uh, to three weeks, depending or even higher, depending on the area. Um, so there are some delays. Yes. Okay. So the importance of having that relationship so that <laughs> so that you can you have that connection so that uh, if there is a, a need to maybe uh, encourage you to come out a little faster or work you into a schedule that helps um, to, to have that relationship set up. Um, and help out your customers. So um, that sounds really good. I don't know if uh, there's any other questions um, coming through, but um, actually I can go on camp too. I just wanted to, uh, as, as I'm here, just wanted to say thank you then for 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 coming in. I think it was it was great. This is um, from what we've heard is is from people as well as even in an earlier session uh, with John McLeod over at Nordics was saying how important um, it is to for contractors to understand the process because it really helps them earn business essentially by being able to talk and, and advise their their customers on it. So uh, so it's really important. Yeah, heap, up, heap up demands have uh, increased substantially. Um, we're seeing that demand pretty much double on a monthly basis. Wow. Um, it's been pretty, uh, it's been crazy. So perfect. Well, uh, okay. Perfect. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah. If uh, if there's no other questions, then I guess we can end the session. We're going to wrap up um, just with a, a wrap up session. We're going to announce the winner uh, of uh, the Milwaukee Packout Vacuum as, as well. Um, but I just really wanted to thank all of you uh, for 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 staying throughout the afternoon. As I as I mentioned earlier in the chat, this has been our very first event that we've held like this and and uh, small learning curve and, and a few little hiccups along the way. But generally, I think it ran OK. Um, and uh, we really appreciate everyone joining and, and turning out. And we do plan to hold more on, on, on different topics throughout the year. So so stay tuned. Uh, definitely. But thank you very much, Steve. It was a great presentation and I uh, really uh, appreciate your participation. So thank you. OK, thanks, everyone.